Greetings, family, friends, and survivors. Oh, that's a good size madrone, madrone tree. Um, the kid's been using this rope, tying it up in different trees for decades. That is an old rope tow rope from Snow Valley, California from the 1930s. And I got a bunch of it laying around and the kids have been using it. That one hung up in a tree for a long, long time. So I'm down here trying to finish up the wood. I did something different. Usually I try to get all the wood split and on the ground drying in stacks so the wind can blow through it uh, by May or in the month of May and then I have May, June, July, August and September to dry it and then you get by it's madrone is hot long burning very dense hardwood very high specific gravity so it's a great firewood. I don't know of any better firewood, but it does need to be cured. And if you only have three months dry time, um, you're gonna get some creosote and you have to clean your stove pipe a lot or you will have flu fires. You should have a full season to a season and a half. So 18 months drying time and it is truly amazing wood with almost no creosote. But I never get to do that. I never can dry it that long. One of the problems is I'd have to have seven to seven and a half to eight cords in storage uh, drying. So I'd have to have almost eight cords more than I'm going to use that year and have that ahead. And that's, the problem is where to put it. I don't have a roof anywhere. I can put up eight cords, but that's it. I can't put up 16 cords. Maybe someday. But so what I did this year and what this video is about is I split this stuff ridiculously small. And it's labor intensive to pick it up and stack it. And it's labor intensive to put it in the stove. But it's bone dry. And so it's more work. But I'm not going to have the flu fires. Um, and I never do because I always clean the stove on a regular schedule. But rather than cleaning the stove every 60 days i'm probably going to be able to go 90 days now and of course dad um, i only clean his once a year because we burn nothing but fur at dad's house bone dry fur because i just don't want there to be a flu fire issue up there and he's got enough to deal with he doesn't need to have to worry about whether he's going to have a flu fire or not so give him all the conifers no pine just just the fur and I will burn pine, I'll burn green madrone, it doesn't matter. I'll just get up on the roof and clean the pipe as much as necessary to be safe. But this year I thought I'd do what another friend of mine does, is he just splits it in much smaller pieces. And then rather than putting it in rows, stacking in rows, he fakes it out on the ground, what I would call one and a half pieces deep. So essentially... The majority of your firewood actually has some sun on it. And his thought was that it the ground actually helps wick water away. And that might be true. All I know is I don't have to stack it that extra time. Because for years, the whole arena area, I, before we put the arena there, I would have 40-foot uh, long rows of madrone stacked. You know, five rows in there, 40 feet long, five feet high, stacked in between um, T-posts. So you get it all here, process it, stack it all, and then load it up and stack it in the sheds. And I just couldn't do it anymore. When I had my boys were home, it was easy. Um, strong men. But, you know, they all moved off and bought their own homes and have their families, and they're not here. So I had to start doing some things different. And... One of the things different is split it smaller because I don't get the dry time that I used to. More labor intensive, but safer and better burning down the road. So if you're wondering why these pieces are split so small, that's the number one reason. 
The second reason is it fits really nice in the wood cook stove, which we do use. And so now I don't have to have special wood for the cook stove, even though I have half a cord of, you know, stuff this big around, all oak. And um, on one side and all fur on the other side. And the mixing the two, you get the right temperatures for everything that you would need to cook on the stove. Uh, I have that. But it's nice to be able to grab wood from the other pile. Uh, normally, uh, the pieces are a piece like this would be split into thirds, and that fits in the stove. the The stove that we use for heating the house, no problem. In fact, you could split it in half, and it'd still fit in there. But it would never fit in the wood cook stove. So it's kind of nice having you know i could put wood in either one I'm trying to talk myself into uh being okay with it being so labor intensive but you know the nice thing about uh about having bone dry wood is you don't have to worry as much about flu fires and you should always be aware of what's going on with your wood stove and because an unattended wood stove um, that has a bunch of creosote in the pipe, I have seen a stove pipe bright red and then fold. I've seen it. And uh, in fact, <laughs> collapse like a taco. Bright red and then collapse like a taco when I shut the air down and it goes hunting for air and it can't find it so it pulls a vacuum and pulls the pipe flat. And now you've got a real problem. And you can avoid all of that just by cleaning your flue pipe on a regular basis and knowing its condition. It's, it's so essential. One of the most, when I was a fireman, one of the most common calls was a uh, flue fire and have to go run a snuffer, climb the roof and run a snuffer down the pipe. And I've had uh, fire calls where the pipe was so thick and creosote. I'm talking about uh, six inch pipe and it only had an inch and a half diameter hole that the smoke was coming through, the heat was coming through. And the snuffer, which was a two inch piece of pipe with holes drilled in it on a booster hose, um, you'd run it down in, in the flue pipe and you could barely get the snuffer in the hole because it, the creosote was so thick. My goodness, that house was not gonna be there a few minutes, after a few minutes if we hadn't got there. And some people don't know. They just think you just keep putting wood in a stove and everything's fine. But I can tell you a good indication of when you have a problem with your wood stove is if you open the door and snow, smoke and ash comes out. Open the door and smoke comes out. That means it's not drafting. Why is it not drafting? It's not drafting because the, well, either you left the damper closed or because you really need to clean your wind cap on top and run the appropriate size brush multiple times through and clean all the creosote out of your pipe. There. And those people that burn ponderosa pine and sugar pine and bull pine, knob cone pine, lodgepole pine, uh, Jeffrey, all of those kinds of pines, there are people around here that we have to burn what, what we get. And you learn really fast with pine what to do and what not to do. And the other thing is be aware of how much pitch wood you got. If you got a lot of fat wood, um, man, maybe I'll do a, a, do a mock-up and show you what a flue fire looks like. And so you'll know what to avoid. That would be pretty cool. Be a good video. Better than this long-winded one. At any rate, it's getting cold at night, and I'm longing for a fire, and I'm not going to get one until we get a dew point every day. And when I come out here and the leaves are not crackling anymore, then I'll know it's okay to have a fire, and I might be 30 days away from that. We'll see how it goes. All right, a lot of prayers going up for the folks with the uh, hurricane, and my son has been already been evacuated. He was in North Carolina, and the Marine Corps moved him off base and sent him up uh, up north and west. So uh, that's a good thing.
but we're really praying that that thing uh, slows down. We don't want it to stall right off the coast. We want it to leave. And we're asking God for mercy, not because we deserve it, but because God is so good. We're asking for mercy. All right, folks, have a blessed day.